Hi guys, welcome to the Electron Elm tutorial. My name is Tensor, I'm from the Tensor Programming blog. And today we're going to do something slightly different than what we've been doing before. We're going to be mainly just talking about this Electron framework rather than writing any code for it. We built an application in the last two Elm tutorials. And this application is a single page Elm application that allows us to interface with Reddit. Here's the code for our application. And inside of this folder, as you can see, I've built up a few more uh, JavaScript files here. I have this app.js file, I have this main.js file, and I have our index.html file. And then I compiled our main.elm file into this elm.js file. I did all of this to allow us to use Electron. So let's actually run this in Electron. So to run the application, all I have to do is type Electron main.js. And this will open a new window. And as you can see, this window is got its own stuff on it. It says Reddit SPA in the corner here. And we can just run the application like we were running it in Elm Reactor. If we click one of the links, it opens a new window. And it's almost like we're working with our own browser and that's exactly what Electron really does is it's a browser that was built off of the Chrome API so it's like a stripped down version of Google Chrome that allows us to build cross-platform offline applications using web technology so you'd be surprised to learn that actually this application that we're in the um, Visual Studio Code application was built off of Electron, so was the Atom text editor, so was the Light Table text editor, and so was the Adobe uh, Brackets text editor. All of these were built using Electron. If we hit Control Shift Y, it will build. It will bring up a JavaScript console like we could inside of Chrome. Of course, this one is heavily modified. So Electron was actually built by the people over at GitHub mainly to help them create Atom. And if we go down here, they actually list all the applications that have been built in Electron. There are quite a bit more than just what I write here. But as you can see, there are quite a few notable ones. For example, Atom, uh, Slack, WordPress, Visual Studio Code. We're all built on the Electron um, module. And as you can see here, it talks about you can use any web technology and it uses the Chromium API and Node.js and then you can just build it using HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. So basically any language that can compile to JavaScript can be used to build an Electron application. Now this is important for Elm because Elm is mainly an online language. You know, it compiles to JavaScript and to HTML and we can use it you, we can use that to our advantage to compile something for Electron. So how exactly does this work? Well, we have a few files here, as I, as I mentioned before. So first we have our index.html file, and as you can see, it's a very simple HTML file. It's just a normal HTML file. It's got the title, Reddit, SPA. As you noticed in the corner of our Electron app, that was the title that showed. Then we just have a div with an ID of app, and then we link to a script called app.js. So inside the app.js, we are bringing in our elm.js file, which is our elm uh, file compiled to JavaScript. And then we are grabbing the container, so the element uh, with the ID of app, and then we are embedding our elm inside of that container if you look at the way that the HTML is structured in here, that's how it looks. As you can see, we've got a typical HTML body, looks a lot like this index.html. And then inside of this div here, this div ID app, we have our entire application. So then this main this main.js file is used to configure our application. So as you can see here, we're bringing in Electron. So we're saying require Electron, and then we're saying 
uh, from electron.app. We're creating an app variable and then we're creating a browser variable, browser window variable rather, from electron.browser window. And then we're saying let main window. And then we're using this main window variable to create a browser window object inside of this create window function. This create window function is deployed anytime um, Electron is in a ready state, meaning anytime we launch Electron. And then we can define the width and the height of the window. So when we watch a launch Electron, it launches in a 1024 by 768 resolution here. And of course we can go to full screen and we can come back. We've also hidden the menu uh, bar. So if I was to remove this, we would have a menu in here. Just a very basic menu. And we can edit the menu if we want. We can put in custom things. Like for example, if we wanted to allow people to go back and forth using the menu, or if we wanted to maybe add some more functionality to this application, we could embed it right into the uh, Electron window. Then we say, okay, we've got this main window, this browser window object rather, and we say, okay, load the index.html file. So load URL index.html. And then this next line here, main window.webcontents.opendevtools, actually is what automatically opens the JavaScript console on launch. So every time we launch this app, it will automatically open the JavaScript console. And then this line down here is what allows us to close the window. So every time we hit close, it deletes the main window uh, object. So if I hit close, it will actually close the app. And this here, this line here, and this anonymous function is mainly just to make sure that we have no uh, menus on any other windows aside from the global window. So for example, if I click one of these links, as you can see, it brings up a new window and this window doesn't have a menu either. And that's what that line is doing. Then this line below it is mainly just for Mac, um, for the Mac operating system. So as you guys probably know, if you have Mac, um, Mac uses sort of a dock system to launch applications. And what this basically does is, so when you uh, close a window in Mac, a lot of times the application stays open and it's just hidden behind the dock. And if you just click the icon, it will not relaunch the application, but rather just reopen a new window. What this is basically doing is it makes sure that when you close the window inside of Mac, it officially closes the application itself. So it runs this app.quit function, which will quit the application. And finally, this last line will activate the window. So when we create a, another instance of our Electron app, so we already have it open here. If I was to run another instance, it wouldn't create a new window. Instead, it would just um, focus in on this window. So we don't have the ability to open multiple windows. Of course, we could change this, make it so that we could open as many windows as we want. So yeah, this is just mostly just boilerplate here. I mean, aside from minor things like the width and the height and removing the menu, this is mainly just boilerplate. If we want to automate this and maybe even make a binary so that people can install our application on their our computer, the way that we do it is through a package.json file or a make file that would automatically run our scripts here. So for example, we could create a very simple executable that would just run electron and then main.js. We've also created another uh, electron app out of our snake.js or our elm snake file. So here's our elm snake file. We open a window and inside of it is our snake game. So we could do a lot with this if we wanted to. If we wanted to package this snake game as its own thing and maybe distribute it to people as an open source cross platform offline application, we could do that. There are a few notable differences with this compared to the Reddit SPA though. I didn't change the index as you can see it's still Reddit SPA. We do have our basic um, 
menu here. So we just have file exit and edit undo and all that stuff reload. We can toggle the dev tools and stuff like that. When you want to create your Electron application, the first thing of course you want to do is to install Electron. So the way you install Electron is by using npm or by using yarn. So you could just use npm install and then you want to install it globally so you type in dash g and then you type in electron and that will install it globally alternatively you can use yarn so you can use yarn global add electron and this will install it globally as well for those of you who don't know what yarn is yarn is basically npm except it is faster it works uh, asynchronously and concurrently so it builds uh, the packages faster. For any of you who've worked with Node, you guys probably are aware that a lot of Node packages have hundreds, if not thousands of files. And sometimes it can be, you know, it can take a while for them to actually build the, you know, the actual module. And in the case of Electron, we do have quite a few files here. So yeah, Yarn is a good alternative. If you're interested, I'll put a link down in the description of how you can get Yarn if you want to. I'll also link Electron and I'll link Node in the description as well. Anyway guys, I hope you enjoyed this very simple explanation slash tutorial of Electron and Elm. Keep in mind that of course Elm is not the only language that you can use to build Electron applications. You could build them with native JavaScript or with any language that compiles to JavaScript. Personally, I prefer Elm. I prefer Dart as well. And I've used ClojureScript to build a few Electron applications too. Uh, I believe VS Code was built using JavaScript. I know Atom was built using CoffeeScript. And I know Lighttable was built using ClojureScript. So yeah, you can see the variety is rather high on the different languages that can be used. All right, guys. So if you enjoyed this tutorial, feel free to subscribe and like. If you have any questions, of course, feel free to comment. And if you disliked it, go ahead and hit the thumbs down. Also, feel free to take a look at us on Twitter if you want to see when the next video will come up. Uh, I believe our next video will be Go tutorial. So we will be continuing our Go tutorial and perhaps going into Elixir or Rust after that. Anyway, I hope you guys have a good night.